And this is our sound check. Check, check, one, two. Check in and out of your hotel room. Check the check. I don't know if I want to lay like this the whole time. I'll just get closer. There we go. All right. Yeah, I should probably get comfortable too. All right. Hello. <laughs> and welcome. <laughs> welcome. Uh, hello. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to talk louder this time. I'm sorry if you turned that up to try to hear what was going on. <laughs> welcome back. You came back. God, that means a lot to We're us. so happy you're back. <laughs> and if this is the first episode, ooh, episode, welcome. Say that again. <laughs> and if this is your first episode, welcome. Welcome. To Hillbilly Trailer Queens Radio. With the country kittens. I'm polyurethane, and I'm everything. And I'm Annie Bolin, and I am the boss. I don't know. I, don't, I still think... You can think whatever you want to think. All right, all right. No, I'm going to let you have it this time. Wrote okay. you a song right. a little while ago. <laughs> so, shut the fuck up on the bus. <laughs> oh, well. So, you got a big trip coming up. Oh, my gosh. Big trip. I'm very excited. I am going back to Europe, but I am not performing. At least not on stage. You know, I might be doing some... Who knows? Polly may pop out in and out. I don't know. I'm going to be running Bob Wayne's merch booth. And I'm very excited. Oh, no, everybody. Hashtag till the heels fall off. (laughs) I'm going to be hustling. Like, I'm going to make Bob some money, but I'm going to, like, weasel in some commission. So then I'm going to just be, like, I made a game. Can you make your own merch? Can we send you with Mm, your own merch? mm, I probably should bring something Hey, everybody in Europe... Watch Bob Wayne's tour for <laughs> polyurethane merch and Hillbilly Trailer Queen radio merch. Yeah, and also maybe if you're listening now, go ahead and let us know what you'd like me to bring over. Not like personally for you, but like merch that you would buy. Yeah, what would you like? Hey, Bob, that's all right with you, right? Hell yeah. Good. All awesome. right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is gonna be good. Oh, all right, yeah. So, where are you gonna be? What's going okay. on? You're going to your. It's going to be. It's going to be your birthday. My birthday in Italy, and I really wish I would have researched the name a little bit better. The first part I got down, it's Cesar. I tried to look at it this morning Tico, on this fast video, but it scrolled by too fast. And so that's on the eastern coast of Italy. I don't know if that's what you call it, but that's. <laughs> The East Coast. That literally. makes sense. I mean, and literally. I'm very excited. There was just on the Google search, it had the map <laughs> with a little beach, and then it also had a cathedral. So that sounds like dope. You yeah, know, small. somewhere I want to be. And then we have the day off after, and I got really excited. I was like, ooh, day off afterward. I'm going to do some cool shit for my birthday. I'm like, I'm touring with Bob. We're probably going to be like driving overnight. Yeah, you don't have any day off. No days off. <laughs> No Sorry fun. To tell you, you guys don't even have a hotel room. You're driving over to that <laughs> night. <laughs> By the way, oh, man. no, so. I'm pretty sure Bob will work really hard to make you have a special birthday. Ain't that right, Bob? Hell yeah! Oh, you're too kind, Bob. You're just the best, the sweetest. I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, we got Bob William join us in the booth. <laughs> Yeah, he asked Today? if he could be the guy that research it, researches our, uh... You know, fact checker. You know, when we're fucking shit up, you know, let us know. Hey, that's hey, hey, right. That's hey, not that's wrong. wrong. No, 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 you don't want to say that. He'll probably be a little quiet because we're usually right. Uh... Yeah. We got you back there. Did... Good to have you, Bob. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, me? So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, let's talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> What? Uh, where else are you going? Italy. All you said is Italy. Oh, Italy. We're going to Just Czech. Like, Haven't been there yet. Czech oh Republic. Do you remember when we went to Amsterdam last year and the hotel room? Isn't that where those guys were from? I think they were from Poland. Weren't they, they Poland were? construction workers? Like Polish? The big group of guys? Yeah, like in the gazebo. Oh. And we were, like, first night in, we are like, I bet I some of these guys are going to smoke some weed. Check. We just got to hang out yeah. here long enough for somebody to light a joint. Be in the money. Spliff. <laughs> With, like, no weed. <laughs> Your ratios. You way know, off. Way off, but that shit is strong. The hash in Europe. 
is fuck uh, the weed in Europe. The I, weed in in Holland. I will fuck you up. lost my hotel room twice. <laughs> And same night twice, like Groundhog Day, room 101, <laughs> first floor. And the worst part is the first time I did it. No, yeah, no. The first time I was in my room, I went out to get dinner. <laughs> I smoked that hu- a huge joint. I like, rolled myself like a fucking Snoop Dogg joint. You know, like, Fuck last you, night bitch. in Europe. Like, I'm from yeah. California. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, I can handle it. <laughs> My last night in Europe. I'm yeah, party. I'd been on tour for yeah. days. I was all alone. I like sat um, by the little canal by my ho- by my hostel that I was in, and like smoked this whole thing to my head, and was bombed like high school high, like boom boom <laughs> helicopter, like so. So side messy. note, Annie was so high one time in the car uh, driving to San- to Pacifica our show. And no, we were going in- to L.A. Oh God, okay, we were going to L.A. <laughs> She looks out the window. She points her little finger up to the window and goes, Ooh, helicopter! Boom, boom! <laughs> I was so excited to see a helicopter. I'm I like, don't... We ain't from the city. <laughs> now, you hear? I don't know where the boom, boom came uh, boom, from, boom, but boom, it boom, came boom. out. Boom, But anyway, so I, w- I was at that kind of level. Okay, all right. And I we went to... Okay. I'm sorry that I interrupted the story with this, but this is pretty funny, I think. I went to dinner, and I, like, yeah, got no. this whole dinner yeah, to take yeah, out, yeah. came home, yeah. ate it in my room. Oh, couldn't find my room. Had to have them help me find my room. <laughs> eat it. Ha- get halfway through, and I'm like, oh, I'm in Rotterdam. I need to go out. I need to see people. I need to do things. So I leave again, and I'm walking down the road, like, probably a block away from my hotel. I was like, oh, dinner. I should eat some dinner. <laughs> Bought a whole new dinner and brought it back to my hotel room. Ate the whole thing. I'm I'm fucking two this story up. No, no, no. That's not what happened. I brought the second dinner back to my hotel room and couldn't find my hotel room again. <laughs> and the people downstairs had to help me again. And then I got back to my room. I opened the door and holding my dinner. And there's my other dinner on the table that oh I didn't even God. remember eating like 18 minutes before. <laughs> And then I decided I shouldn't go out in Rotterdam. I should probably go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Anyways, Funny thing sorry. is the name of that marijuana strain <laughs> from Holland is amnesia. <laughs> and they ain't fucking around. They're not fucking around. <laughs> and they mean it. That's All the right, kind I'm, I got, too, yeah. when I cried <laughs> at the oh, dinner yeah. table. Yeah. Natalie, we were at a dinner table at our sweetest... Um, they're like our great aunt and uncle in mm-hmm. Holland. Mm-hmm. Ned and Betty. What's up, Ned and What's Betty? What's up, Ned and Betty? We love you. Love you. Um, we were at their dinner table, and Natalie had never used the cheese slicer before, the one with, like, the handle and the little wire that is attached on either end. And she was trying to slice the cheese down, and she <laughs> sliced it so hard that she slam the table i've never used one before i was like really nervous about it and we're at this beautiful dinner party she's like cooked all this amazing food I remember it was like curry chicken it was no, amazing what there's a pork chicken yeah and no, like there was curry, a curry. vegetables yeah. and like rice and do you bread, hear that and like <laughs> betty we love you and okay. we're appreciative we that remember was four what we years eat. ago yeah also death like your leek and oh, fennel, we still talk about uh, that. potato mash you know okay anyways we gotta think for ned food. and betty she slams her hand on the table oh my god i slam my elbow on the table and i immediately am so embarrassed and ned looks over at me he goes are you nervous number one who cares if you slam your hand on the table? It's yeah, not yeah. a big deal. No, no. But it just like wrung everything. You know when everything jumps off the table, it's like crash. Well, Ned asked if you're nervous, but I looked at you and was like, bitch, are you crying right now? Well, I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> I start shedding tears silently. I hang my head low. There was and like I six hope of that- us at the table. <laughs> so embarrassed i didn't know how to use nice fancy things okay <clears throat> that was the embarrassing part is like i didn't know how to be european and fancy what Bougie. what made us start talking about this going to europe i'm going i know but like why were we talking about how strong the weed was <laughs> 
I don't know. I guess this weed's pretty strong, too. If we get California. You know, I thought, like, I'm a California girl. I can handle anything. But no. J.D. Wilkes is mostly known as the rambunctious frontman of the legendary Shack Shakers. J.D. is also a painter, comic artist, and historian, writing such books as Barn Dances and Jamborees Across Kentucky. Now, he has written his first novel, The Vine That Ate the South. We join J.D. at one of the locations that sparked his imagination to write The Vine That Ate the South. Adjacent a busy western Kentucky highway resides a forgotten memory, a real ghost town. Obscured by trees and undergrowth, passers-by are really not aware of its existence. Trudging through the mud toward the town's hotel is J.D. He blends perfectly into the winter-esque landscape, both in terms of visuality and mood. One supposes that if this town suddenly came back to its former life, J.D. wouldn't be out of place. For he's nearly a ghost himself, a shadow of times past projected onto modern society. But, uh, yeah, I started writing the book you know, four or five years ago in Norway when we were playing over there. And in Nor we were in the Arctic Circle of Norway, and we're, we're in this van, like land of the midnight sun. But then everything goes dark when you go into these long tunnel caves through these mountains. And you got to imagine, it looks, it's like Middle Earth. It's so pristine in the Arctic Circle up there, these mountains and everything driving through it just seeing all this beauty and then like plunged into darkness into this cave you know basically and you're in that tunnel driving for like 30 minutes of darkness so i cracked my laptop open for a light source and it's just started waxing poetic about kentucky because i was getting homesick but i'm also in this lord of the rings frame of mind because i'm in the mountains uh underground like where dwarves might live and and elves and dragons and I say, like, you know what, we've got our own monsters and witches and crazy characters that are ours, that aren't Anglo-Saxon necessarily, but are Southern. And what if somebody did a Kentucky Lord of the Rings, you know, about folk tale, our folk tales, you know, hoodoo, voodoo, Appalachian stuff, you know, Mississippi Delta stuff. We're at the crux of the Mississippi Delta and the foothills of Appalachia. So there's a lot of culture, a lot of stories, superstitions and sayings that I could cram into this thing and have a field day. So that's what I did. The vine that ate the south and, you know, the kudzu and all the, you know, the vines and wisteria and all that. I tried to make it nice and lush like the landscape and, uh, and our culture. So my little valentine. In art school, they taught us about the sublime, and that is like a fear of nature, nature looming large over you. And it's like, it's like Moby Dick. If you read Moby Dick, it's, it's, this, it's almost a biblical story about nature and how powerful it is and how we all, all, all knees bow to God's creation because it's so awesome. So, I, in the same way, my white whale are the woods of western Kentucky. And my um, uh, seven seas are the are the trails that cut through the woods, and uh, that's that's just uh, I think the style of writing is more in that 19th century florid language because I because I, I see that in nature here you know very all the all the vines twisting the, the blackjack vines and the kudzu and all that I see that as almost like a, floral language that, that, you know, that describes where we're standing even better.
Hey, it's Colonel J.D. Wilkes from the legendary Shack Shakers, and you're listening to Hillbilly Trailer Queen Radio. Spliffs. So <laughs> on that note, maybe they are not misproportioned. <laughs> And maybe we can't handle yeah, our shit. Yeah, maybe they just know what the fuck they're doing. They're well experienced, and we're just idiots coming in like, I can drink more than you. I can smoke more weed than you. <laughs> so dumb. Yeah, real dumb. But shout out to that amnesia strain. Yeah, amnesia. What's up? If you want to be girl? our sponsor, amnesia. I want to meet a girl named Amnesia <laughs> that's this crazy that makes you forget shit like that. Like, girl, if you out there somewhere, please hit me up on Instagram at polyurethane. Page me. <laughs> Page me. Mm. Oh yeah, that is good. Um. Anyways, we are now on iTunes. On iTunes, you guys, we made it. We We're did like it. A big deal. This is this is huge. I don't know if you know, but this automatically means that we are famous. We're not famous. We used to go by famous for a long time. No, no, no. We famous now. If you're on iTunes and Spotify and Instagram, yes, and Facebook. So just to back up that famous part, we need you to go oh. like and subscribe <laughs> and rate to our show. Hold up, so we can actually uh, live our get our list get some listeners because that really helps and it's basically the only thing you can do unless you just want to straight up send us dollar bills yeah and we just really want to be country kittens uh worldwide global uh situation so if you could go and like subscribe and please rate us with like four or five stars yeah at least four don't e- yeah. I don't want to see any two star, one star shit. Why are you even gonna do it if you're gonna do that? Don't do that. Actually, you know what? Go ahead. S- <laughs> fuck around and find out. <laughs> that is not a threat. This is the country kitten's lawyer. <laughs> hey Bob, can you get the lawyer to like make sure he goes and edits that for us? Uh-huh. Fact check that. <clears throat> All right. Anyways, speaking of touring Europe, we got False Freedom mm, in the house. Our guests today. They joining us. They are a local punk rock band. They have been playing for 15 years locally and they are seriously one of my favorite punk rock bands and I am seriously a picky bitch when it comes to this <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, they're super great. They're uh, outstanding dudes for one. They're great musicians for two. Or maybe I should switch that around. <laughs> Number one, they're great musicians. <laughs> Number two, they're outstanding dudes. Why did you switch that around? Well, because I feel like music's really important to them, and they want you it to be that You don't think being way. a good person is important? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> whatever, you know. Whatever floats your boat. I think I'd rather be a better performer <laughs> than a better person. But maybe that's well, you are my... a better performer yeah. than a better person, so <laughs> See, okay. achievement well, unlocked. <laughs> uh, level up, <laughs> next level. I'm just kidding. I love you. I love you too. You have some work to do. I know. <laughs> a lot of fucking work. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you about some work I need to do. Okay. <clears throat> this girl oh gets so stoned. Well, I don't. E- I wasn't even stoned yet. I it just is. fired up the dab rig. Just got it going on. Welcome to California. We smoke weed with torches, and I look like a crack addict. I fire it up, get it red and hot, ready to go. And you know what? I pull it out. It all does. It does its thing. I'm done, and I'm about to put it away in its plastic cabinet, like a shelf, like a like a broom cabinet outside situation. I'm like, I'm gonna put this away. I'm like, ooh, it's still pretty hot. Like I should hit it one more time because it's still kind of smoking. I don't want to waste any. So I go and I put my lips on the hot part. (laughs) And now she has got blister lips Botox free. Uh, They were real, looking real good the first day, minus the funky brand. A U-shaped brand from the bowl. Uh, Quartz. It's a quartz one. Oh, shit. My alarm's going off out there. For what? Well, it's just going off. Let me just keep it. Right. She's gonna edit this out. So yeah, real terrible 
this awful situation. This was actually situation. set because I took a nap upstairs in the office before work yesterday. So yesterday at this time, I was waking up to pissed. go back. <laughs> oh, to have to go to I work. I did not want to wake up. I was so tired. Um, yeah, that's no fun. All right, but anyways, false freedom. That's what we were talking about. We just started talking about ourselves again. Edit all that out, oh Bob. My God, that's Bob, embarrassing. Done. take Bob, all that can out. Can embarrass, like, erase that? Fucking <laughs> narcissistic psycho bitches oh, right God. here. Okay. I have to give you a fair warning, and I hope you can stick with it. We didn't have our microphone plugged in all the way when we started this. You guys, we have to apologize. If you stick with it. It gets so better. So worth it. And it, we apologize to, to False Freedom, too. We don't have our shit together. We're learning. Yeah, we're It was our first interview. Oh. <laughs> See? See what I'm saying? This is the alarm. It's exactly. Going off. Well, it is time. It is time. Welcome, everyone. For a bad... Recording. Recording of a rad On interview. On our part. Yes. They did a great job recording. It was yeah. just, you know, a little technical difficulty, if you will. Here we go. And we're here today with False Freedom. Motherfucking False Freedom. <laughs> this is False Freedom. False Freedom is a punk band from Tuolumne County, where we are from Mammoth's Polyurethane. And we just got done having a little business meeting with them, and we decided what better way to start off our season of guest interviews than to do it with someone who's also performers from our local area. Guys. Hey. Hi. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Uh, it, well, sorry. Sorry. Dog toys. <laughs> sorry. Dog toys. Do you want to introduce yourselves as a band and individually so people can recognize your voices so they know who's who when you're talking? Sure. I'm Sloth, I handle the six string. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they call me Trav, Travy Cat, or just, yeah, Trav. I play the, the drums. And I'm the ghost of the most, Mr. Burt. Mr. Burt. Man. Yeah. We're the Mr. worst Bert. band in the world. Yeah. False freedom. <laughs>
Nice. How long have you guys been playing together? It'll be 15 years come November 22nd. Whoa, wow. 15 years? Yep. Oh, I was thinking it was like 10. It's officially half my life, considering just turned 30, 15 years, so I think it's a good reason to get a tattooed on my neck. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Always a good reason. Always. Why not? Well, oh, that's a long time. Well, well what is it? Five years now, for me? Yeah, because I was going to say you like that, yeah. are all three were the original I feel like it's more lineup, like seven. Right? No, it's, I think five, maybe six. At least now. five. Probably six now, I would say. Yep. Yeah. Must have played a lot of shows then. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, one or two. Nice. Yeah, I'm working on my uh, transitions here. One or two a year All at right. least. All right, one or two. Yeah, so you guys have played a lot of shows locally, obviously. What would you say is your best show of Tuolumne County playing here? Ooh. Our 10 year anniversary was pretty, was pretty badass. Cool. Oh, I also cool. like the year right before that when we got to play on the, the actual day, the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination, where uh, we had one of our friends put a JFK mask on. We shot him in the back of the head with a confetti cannon. <laughs> we played Bullet from and the Misfits. Covered Bullet from the Misfits. <laughs> nice. So that was a good one, too. No, wait, was Thanks, it, Canyon. Was the 10 year anniversary show at the Gypsy Shack? It was. The I think Jamestown I was bartending Gypsy. that night. Uh, I think I got a bartend that night, and I think that was the first time I'd seen you guys play in about 10 years. I think I hadn't seen you play really any between. Like, I don't remember where it was in the beginning where I had seen the band play. But I remember being so fucking stoked on the show that night and being like, oh my gosh, there's real punk rock in Sonora. I had completely given up on, on it until that moment. A lot of generations have come and gone since the beginning of the band. Lots of different... I've seen the music scene die and come back and die and come back so many times in this town. Yeah. Well, that's something we wanted to talk to you about. So what is it like now, playing a show here like in town? Like, our music scene. Like, well, let's talk about what it was, what it's been. When you first started out... Do you feel like it's the same? Yeah. Our no, music scene like, right now, no, God, what's happening. It's definitely grown, but what we have here is so special compared to what I see when we go to the Bay Area and whatnot. Honestly, most of the time we're playing to the other bands and a couple mm -hmm. other people, and when we get them, when we make friends with another band, we're like, hey, you should come play a little mountain. They come up here, they see what we have, they see the energy that our crowd gives off, and they are blown away every single time. Well, every, like you guys are a huge exception to, I think, the music scene and what's happening right now, because every show you guys play is completely sold out, yeah. and it's, you guys, it's like, your fans out. come hard, and there's a lot of people there. A lot of people always show up, that's for sure. It's, um, it's kind of surreal, because whenever we do, like Sean was saying, whenever we do play out of town, um, we always get the woe factor. And especially from the other bands, and then when we invite them up here, pretty much every single band that ever plays up here, they always tell us it was their best show. Yeah. They're like, we haven't played a show like this in forever, or like, this is the best show, and like... The um, scene up here is incredible. There's yeah. something about just your guys' sound and the whole, uh, I don't know the whole, I don't want to say body because that's not the right word, but the whole feel of uh, your guys' show and set, I feel like a lot of people always say like, oh, this brings me back like to when I was a kid. Like, oh, totally. I do get that a lot. A lot. Yeah, we get that all the time. And I feel like that is, um, I don't know, I would say like a lot of your fans here are younger, you know, like you're, uh -huh. it's younger, but when I've seen you guys and the people that I've seen, you know, older people that I know have seen you, they've always said that. And I think that creates something for the traveling bands, too, when they mm -hmm. come back to get such a huge response from the audience and then feel like they're playing with a real band from back in the, the times when punk rock was really fucking epic. Epic. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because you guys are pretty fucking epic. You have that sound, that old school GBH. I mean, you guys have your own sound, but like you know, it's that. I get that you. Time. It's got some punch. Yeah. I think we're kind of lucky because, like, 
the whole punk rock thing happened in the 80s and like there's the different sounds from different areas but I feel like we have the chance to take all of that and make our own little punk rock cocktail we have some songs that are inspired by like Dead Kennedys and then Bad Brains and then some GBH and it's like we try not to stick to one if it sounds good we're gonna play it yeah we try not to stick to one dynamic too much so what's the message behind False Freedom what, what are you guys trying really a, to get out there? It's not really a punk band. It's more or less like originally started as an awareness band, hence the word the name originated from. Yeah. Um, you know, and the songs were kind of leaning that way. But, uh, and then also at the same time, we don't want to be those, not trying to be those constant assholes, you know, being the monkey on your back trying to tell you what you probably already know. Yep. You know, so we also throw in those, you know, everyday life songs like steak and eggs yeah. you know or uh we're here to drink or total disregard yeah so when you go check out false freedom's music really make sure you tune in and listen to the lyrics because they are brilliant and they're trying to tell you something this they're not just saying and don't get me wrong i love no effects i grew up loving no effects but they're not just saying don't drink and drive, you might spill your drink. Yep. There's some meaning, and there's reason, and there's... I mean, come on, no effects is a lot of meaningful shit, too, but... Um, pay attention, because I think you guys are worth being heard. In fact, actually, the album is a big riddle. The the cover... The cover... The, the back art, the song order from beginning to end, it's all story. Mm -hmm. Everything, all the lyrics, it's all one big... Giant riddle. Do you hear that, Internet sleuths? Do you hear that? <laughs> You're all out there. Check that out. You're trying to solve all the crimes in the world right now with your podcast. Here you go. Solve the false mi the false freedom mystery. If you come up to us and uh, and think you know the answer and you get it right, I'll give you a free shirt. He'll give you a free blowjob. There you go. Right Thanks there. Blowjob. <laughs> he takes for free. <laughs> all right. Oh, wow. He worked really hard on that riddle, so... Yeah. <laughs> No, but that. speaking of something, Bird, that you have worked really hard on, tell me about your claymation music video. It, well, it wasn't really a music video. It, it was wasn't? Just, it was just a picture. It was the album cover. The album yeah. cover picture. We spent yeah. way too much time on that thing, but <laughs> mainly Bert. Well, but, uh, it took me a year. Like a year, right? A year, five months, and eight days. Hey, wow. Go check that shit out. Go look at it. Gluing toothpicks to toothpicks. That's to dedication. Make the oh my gosh. Stage dressing and every piece all of sorts clothing, of foot, eyeball, beer can, beer bottle, bar, instrument. You know what we're talking about, right? Yeah, but yeah. Light bulb, everything. Oh my god. That's I think amazing. the actual bar scene is particularly impressive. Good job on that one, Bert. It was kind of inspired to, from the via and homage of the old Gypsy Shack. Oh. We, were, we were actually going to donate it to the Gypsy Shack, but once it went down, yeah, they kind of now it just sits in a box. Because speaking of, has it have you guys noticed a change in your shows or booking shows locally without a venue like the Gypsy Shack being here in this town? Definitely. Yeah. Of all ages. The Winter's Tavern's definitely picked up the slack for that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, other than the tavern and the water wheel... That's pretty much it. You know? Yeah. We're, but, yeah. we're not very casino friendly, so... Right. And, like yeah. Bert said, too, like, the all ages factor. Like, we're mm -hmm. in a we're in a small town where there's not a lot to do for young people, and young people that probably need to go get out and see shows and do that kind of stuff, so... Losing that was a big bummer. R.I.P. Gypsy Shack. R.I.P. Yeah. All the good times that Plus were had also there. Chris the, and Tina. The younger crowd is more or less like uh, benef more of a beneficiary for our type of music because they still have an opportunity to, you know, mold what they're thinking the. Mm -hmm. uh, not being conditioned by society's, mm -hmm. you know, nine to five. Everything that's on the radio and yeah, right. they're pounded to their yeah, face. Corporate music. music. And their minds are still open All somewhat right. and not right. completely clouded. Exactly. They have, yeah, opportunity to grow on their own without others' influences. Like how we all did. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, and like we were saying a little bit ago at our meeting, 
Um, that's kind of like what they're doing for their youth over in Europe. Right. With the way they um, are providing funds, funds and encouraging yeah, artists, encouraging art come. and music of all kinds. And on that note, you guys are considering hitting Europe fall 2019. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. You've heard it right here, ladies First, and gentlemen. News, news, news flash. flash. Man, there's something, here here. something here, you, weird about yes. government funds to pay punk bands to play and make art. <laughs> yeah, Man, what's up with that? I'll take it. America, listen, learn. Yeah. Um, yeah, so hopefully we're going to get you guys over in some wicked awesome places. And if that is the case, what are you looking forward to the most? Change. Just rocking and rolling anywhere I can. That's all I want to do with my life, rock and roll around the world and start in Europe. Opportunity. Yeah. Maybe more more all age events, if that's any case. Again with all age events when we were all younger, uh, there wasn't things like the internet, how how big of a monster it is today. Mm-hmm. The only thing the only way we can get out back in the day was to go to shows. Yeah, right. You know, and that was and that was our outlet, our getaway. Which you, you know, right. no, it's okay. I just you can, instead of trying to, instead of having a an outlet like via your phone or, or you know, or any type of social media branch, it was finding a way to to micromanage your your time around your parents or or whatever to sneak out to get to the show to see what's new. Mm-hmm. Or to listen with new, you know, hide yourself in your room to listen to new albums. I was, I act, I was living that in Tuolumne County as a teenager. We had oh, yeah. Borderline Warehouse right. and then the Junkyard. Like we had a huge punk rock scene, and I was in elementary school doing right. three shows a week. You know, totally belligerent. I was telling him, that. yeah, uh, well, yeah, locally belligerent. My cousin was in AAA that Hell played yeah. here, but I mean, Oppressed Logic played here. I, right. I danced on stage with the Vandals when I was like 14 yeah. years old, you know, like in Sonora. Tuolumne County had a huge, huge punk scene back then. And all the kids were super involved and so tight knit and like the community was just so different than the youth right, right now. In oh, it's in polar area. opposites. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So more or less going to what you're saying about going out to Europe, what I'm being more exciting about is your more or less saying that people get out or more, you know. They go out to, to find and do things instead of yeah. just sitting behind a screen all day long. Right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. whether it's in their pocket or at their house. So that's the most exciting part mm-hmm. is being able to expand and what's so all cool, our minds. They're so open. Like, they're so open over there. Like, we, our Hillbilly Burlesque show played, like, metal festivals and they loved it. They loved the music. Like, we played so sit down dinners where yeah, people sit. were sitting down to have a fit, like candle. And I'm like, dinner. have fake cocaine all over my face. We got face. beer cans in our hair. And we're like, yeehaw! Miss Polyurethane's about to come on stage and ride the biggest cock you've ever seen. <laughs> and she comes out on a big rooster, you know? Yeah. Like, but like elderly people eating dinner, like, oh, oh we love it! <laughs> and we were like, oh god, this is gonna be the show that we, we thought they were gonna, gonna show. We're gonna bomb this. Everybody, it's gonna be like crickets. It's gonna be on the news. Yeah, it's going to be on the news. Yeah. Play some wild. That's awesome. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, they're so. just so down and like they're, I don't know. They're not so clouded. No, over totally. There. They're oh, not so some... clouded. They're they're aware and awake. Can we get some of that over here? Can we get some of that? Right. And a little bit of cheese. <laughs> all the cheese. Actually, send all, start shipping it in. Bring the cheese.
Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. We are going to hear... I don't know what the emotion is going to be behind Another it. exciting moment of what I almost died. Another exciting moment of almost death. With Bert from False Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite stories. And I'm really thankful for this. And once in a while, anytime I'm up there in Twain Heart, I, I knock on people's doors and still thank them for finding me. Um, so... He has a few that start out like wow. this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we just heard another one when he was found in quicksand. So it was about when I was 17 years old, and one of my favorite things to do when I was I was dating this girl in America, and what I used to tell her is, you know, it'd be really cool is if we go to people if we go to gas stations and we find pickup trucks that have blankets in the back and we'll jump in the back of it. And so we we there was this I think it was an F250, and we jump in the back of this green truck. And we cover ourselves in the blanket. There's a bunch of recycling bullshit in the back. <laughs> and he takes us all the way up there. And I'm like, cool. Now we can. This is like survival mode. Now we get to find out. We're gonna we find our way home. We've, we've got plenty of beer. We got pot. The uh, we just got done. Yeah, tap tapping on the shoulder to a pump at this gas station. <laughs> so uh, we get up there. And right when we get there, there's this huge party. Huge fucking party in Twainer. It's a three-story house, and uh, we're I'm all peeing on the side of this guy's truck, and I'm and I'm start to I start to leave, and someone's like, "Hey, Bert!" And I'm all I look over, and it's uh fucking God, what's his name? And his name is Maya. He uh he flags me down. He's like, oh shit. And he comes up, he's like, dude, you gotta get up here. We're fucking partying hard. And I'm all, all right, hang on a second. I like, run back to the run back to the truck and I'm all Erica, Erica, come on, let's there's a huge party, we gotta go over there. She's like, seriously? I'm like, fuck yeah. Let's get over there. <laughs> and, so we, and so uh we go over there and we're partying all fucking night. I'm three sheets to the wind. And uh you know, everyone's starting to drop like flies. It's getting close to, it's, you know, it's got to be at least pushing towards three in the morning by now. And, uh, I asked Maya, I'm like, hey, Maya, we're going to piss around here. And he's like, oh, dude, uh, there's a bathroom. There's a bathroom over there. And I'm knocking on The door's locked. And he's like, I'm like, the bathroom's, the bathroom's locked, been locked for days now. And there, uh, the, we were in the third story, and I had to go all the way down to the bottom to get to get outside because it was like a second story, and then the third story was a, like a balcony setup. You had to go up these wood stairs, and then everyone else was up there with the beer. And uh, so I'm like, fuck it, I'll just go there. I knew there was a deck. And so I go out to the deck, and no one... I'm like... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like gonna... I'm starting to pee... Gonna- I'm deck. starting to pee, and I, I'm i like kind of like nodding out. I'm just like, oh my god, I need to do this all fucking night. And I didn't know... Like there nodding w- out with relief. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I didn't realize that they were rebuilding the deck, and there was no railing. <gasps> and that was my last memory, and I fell off that deck three stories down. Oh my god. And it had to have been raining. It was raining... For, I want to say it was raining for like two weeks, and all down that on the on the side of the because uh, they're on the side of a mountain. Yeah, like how a lot of our houses up here are like on stilts on the right, side exactly. Of the hill. They like um, they have it terraced at the bottom, and it's all, it was freshly terraced, so it's all fresh dirt, and it was really soft. So right when I hit on it, I like kind of penciled into it, <gasps> and I kind of just like oh my God. I kind of went in there, and I just remember just like. I thought it felt. I I remember kind of like falling it's over. So lucky it I was know. soft dirt like that. Totally. I oh felt like God. it was. It felt like honestly, it happened so quickly that I thought I kind of just like fell off the side, and I was like, it, the dirt was all warm and everything, and I remember just like, uh, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. fuck it. You just you know? go sleep here. And then the next, uh, it had been like, I mean, almost two in the afternoon by the time I finally woke up. 
and that people were cleaning up the party and there was a bunch of beer cans all down there and some, someone sent, went down there to pick up all the cans and they found me down there and they're all, they're like, hey, hey, they're all like smacking me on the side of the face and I'm like, what, what? And they're all like, dude, are you okay? And I'm all, yeah. And I was like, fuck, what the fuck? And I'm like, get Another out. time you're d- deep. In kind dirt. of in the dirt, yeah. And he I'm just all... told us a story where he was sunk in the quicksand. It's quicksand. quicksand, almost died. I'm literally floating on quicksand. I'm, dirt. Get, I'm getting out of the dirt. I'm like, whoa. And, uh. Who buried me? Like, <laughs> well, in Bert's first reaction whenever anybody wakes him up is what happened. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Those are his words every time you wake him up for anything. <laughs> and, uh. I hear Maya being all like, motherfucking Bert! And he like, he rips, he goes all the way down to the side of the house, and they're, me and, I don't know the guy's name, it was one of his buddies, was like patting me, all the dirt off me, and I'm all like, fuck man, that was a long night. You got any water? And they're like, Maya was grabbing me, he's like, you are like, Jesus! <laughs> Dude, you fucking... And I'm like looking, I'm trying to look over, and I thought it was gonna be like a deck right there. Yeah. And they're like, the rock goes way up, and I'm, they're like, dude, you fell from really far up. And I like look up, and it's like way up there is the duck, the deck, and they have the tall stilts and all the. I'm Holy like, shit. I'm like, fuck. And I just remember like grabbing myself, I'm like, fuck, man, that's, that's. Lucky I, I'm like a, I guess I'm like I guess I'm like a fucking cat. That is one of my lives. lives. Okay. Fuck. So uh, tune and, in again next week for another last number three uh, <laughs> life threatening story with Bert from False Freedom. God damn, dude, you're uh, so lucky. Eric was all, Erica like came and I was like, oh fuck, I thought you ditched me last night. I, we, we oh, couldn't, she's all pissed. We couldn't Your find you. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Exactly. Oh, she's yeah. she fucking... broke up with you three times. Totally. Already on the text yeah. message. The, uh, oh, man. I bet she felt bad she, after that. It, yeah, it, was, it was crazy. <laughs> that, was, that was a night I'll, or at least a morning I'll never forget. Wow. Wow. Thanks well, well we're glad you're here. We're glad you're still alive. Oh, yeah. Party on. Fuck yeah. Roll. Have a good time. Rock roll. Where all your dreams and your nightmares will sing to the top and feed your soul. Feed your soul. Shake all. Shake all. You're supposed to feed on the spirit of all your intentions. Feed your soul. Feed your soul. Shake all. Shake all. You can run. No
single through false freedom. Never stop rocking. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Just continuing to have fun and write music and show the world more opportunity. Fuck yeah. Fuck and yeah. is it www.falsefreedom.com? Yep. That's it. Yep. All right. You guys got to go check them out. Go drop them a like on Facebook. Hit me up if you want to see them at your local punk rock uh, big gigantic festival. Huge. Only the best for these motherfuckers. That's right. <laughs> don't don't come at me with nothing little. <laughs> these guys iTunes. are rock stars. Can't you tell? <laughs> yes. We're on iTunes. They're on the, iTunes. All yeah. Why don't you give us your thing. let us yeah, know? Do, yeah, you do the thing. All the Instagram, like any type of social media outlet you could think of besides things like. Twitter. Twitter and that's the only one I think we're not on. Yeah. So well, YouTube, no, no, no. Instagram, Facebook, False Freedom. Yeah. Yep. All right. Reverb Two words. Mission, iCloud or SoundCloud, SoundCloud yeah. Bandcamp, Reverb, yeah, all that shit. All right. You, awesome. You name it. If you can't find it, you're an idiot. You're a fucking <laughs> idiot. Have you used Google? Yeah. <laughs> Ask Siri. She'll find it for you. Or all Alexa. Right. If you're a Google person. <laughs> all right. Rock and roll world. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye, Thank guys. so much for joining us thank you for coming back or visiting us for the first time discovering us if this is your first time go back and listen to starting over our first episode 
Yeah, and if you're interested, you can check us out on The Country Kittens on Facebook. We're on Instagram. YouTube, The Country Kittens Experience. And we aren't trying to rip Joe Rogan off. That was before we even knew what was going on with that when we made that thing. Oh, I didn't even know there was a correlation between that. Well, I mean, there's not. It's just like his podcast is called The Joe Rogan Experience. And And since I started listening to it this year, you know, like I realized that. That's the name of our YouTube channel. And well, now I think it's better for us. I think it's just better for us. You know. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. I think you have everything you need out there, so we're gonna just go ahead and keep on keep, keep on, on keep that on, keep unless you need to send us a cease and desist letter. I and mean, we would love that. Actually, <laughs> oh my God, I would frame it. I would freak wall. out. Please send us a cease. And desist. <laughs> go ahead, everybody. Hashtag Joe Rogan in this episode, please. Yeah. Say, hey, these girls are ripping off the name of your show. <laughs> Hey, you need to channel. call your lawyer and have them stop it. I think this could actually be something. Uh, you could also find us at www.countrykittens.com and everywhere you can listen to a podcast pretty much. Uh, Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio. Wherever it is that you listen to it, subscribe to it. Rate it. Like it. And like it, yeah. And please make sure that when you spell country, you use a K. Two K's. Country Country with the K. Kittens. K. K. Okay? K. (laughs) Okay. Ready? All right. Well, that's it. Thanks, Bob, for joining us today. We really appreciate having you here. Bob, thank you. Yeah, you're you're the best. I think maybe we'll just keep you around. That sounds killer. Yeah, you want to hang out for a while? Let us know. Did you like having Bob here with us today? Let Let him know. Let him know. Let us know. And tune in two weeks from now to hear more bullshit tour stories from us. And then the episode after that, a real episode with Bob Wayne. A real one. And we'll see you on the interweb. All right. Don't forget, everybody. Thank you so much. I just was confused that I said interweb. All right. We will see you on the line. All right. And don't (laughs) squat with your spurs on. Stay tuned in and stay tuned up, everybody. We'll see you dirt bags and baguettes later. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Au revoir. <laughs>